Welcome back, everyone. We'll be discussing another endocrinological disorder today, which is Graves' disease. Graves' disease is an autoimmune disease that occurs due to TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone receptor autoantibodies, which stimulate the thyroid and cause overproduction of thyroid hormones. It involves diffuse goiter, ophthalmopathy, and dermopathy. It is named after Dr. Robert Graves, an Irish physician who described this form of hyperthyroidism about 150 years ago. Risk factors for Graves' disease include age over 50 years, female gender, genetic susceptibility, patients with other autoimmune diseases are more likely to be affected, and of course smoking. Before discussing the pathophysiology of Graves' disease, let's have a quick recap of the anatomy and physiology of the thyroid gland and its hormones, as well as the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. The hypothalamus in the brain releases thyroid-releasing hormone, or TRH, which acts on the anterior pituitary and causes it to release thyroid-stimulating hormone, or TSH. TSH is carried by the bloodstream to the thyroid gland where it stimulates the follicles to produce thyroid hormones. Now in Graves' disease, TSH receptor autoantibodies are formed which act on the TSH receptors and stimulate the thyroid gland, causing it to become overactive and leading to overproduction of thyroid hormones. But the question is, where do these autoantibodies come from? Well, within the lymph node, the TSH receptor-like antigen is picked up by the antigen-presenting cells and is presented to the naive T-cells. Now the T-cells become activated and in turn cause the B-cells to produce plasma cells that give rise to autoantibodies against the TSH receptor. The next question that arises is what causes the immune cells to become abnormally or inappropriately activated against the thyroid gland? Well, the exact cause is unknown, as in other autoimmune diseases. However, many factors can lead to this inappropriate immune cell activation, such as genetic susceptibility, infections with viruses or bacteria, or infections with certain gut organisms, such as E. coli or Yersinia enterocolitica. These organisms possess cell membrane TSH receptors. Antibodies against these receptors may cross-react with the TSH receptors on the host thyroid cells. This raises the possibility that the initiating event in the pathogenesis may be an infection with possible molecular mimicry in a genetically susceptible individual. Patients with Graves' disease usually present with hyperactivity, irritability, and insomnia. They may complain of sweating, heat intolerance, palpitations, dyspnea, oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea, increased thirst, weight loss, ankle swelling, and Graves dermopathy, which involves raised pink or purplish plaques on the foot, also known as pretibial myxedema. Patients may also complain of excessive lacrimation due to Graves ophthalmopathy, which we'll be discussing in detail in a bit. On examination, the patient will appear anxious and irritable. There may be a diffuse, painless enlargement of the thyroid, also known as goiter, with a bruit, which is basically an audible vascular sound associated with turbulent flow. Clinical findings may also include alopecia or hair loss, congestive heart failure, tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, hypertension, fine tremors, hyperreflexia, and thyroid acropechy, which is a periosteal hypertrophy indistinguishable from finger clubbing. Since TSH receptor autoantibodies are not very specific, they can cross-react with TSH-like receptors in the eye causing Graves ophthalmopathy, which involves cytokine-mediated proliferation of fibroblasts that secrete hydrophilic glycosaminoglycans and increase the interstitial fluid content. This leads to proptosis and, in severe cases, optic nerve compression. The TSH receptor autoantibodies can also cross-react with receptors in the skin causing Graves' dermopathy, also known as pretibial myxedema 
which involves raised pink or purplish plaques on the anterior aspect of the leg, extending onto the dorsum of the foot. Important investigations for Graves' disease includes a blood test or a thyroid function test, which will reveal decreased serum TSH and increased levels of free T3 and T4. TSH receptor autoantibody levels will also be elevated. A thyroid ultrasound helps assess the thyroid structure to look for adenomas. Radioactive iodine uptake tests involve administering a small amount of radioactive iodine and the amount of radioactive iodine taken up by the thyroid is measured with a scanning camera. The radioactive iodine uptake is elevated in Graves' disease due to an overactive thyroid. For treating Graves' disease, antithyroid drugs such as methimazole or propylthiouracil are considered the first-line treatment. These drugs block the binding of iodine and coupling of iodotyrosines. Important side effects include liver damage and agranulocytosis. Radioactive iodine is usually given in the form of pills, capsules, or a liquid. It accumulates in the thyroid and irradiates the gland with its beta and gamma radiations. Indications for radioiodine include failed medical or surgical therapy. Surgery is indicated in cases of large goiter compressing the trachea, or in cases of cancer suspicion, failed medical therapy, or where radioiodine therapy is inadvisable. Risks associated with surgery include recurrent laryngeal nerve damage, hematomas, hypoparathyroidism, and infections. For treating Graves' ophthalmopathy, methyl cellulose eye drops or gel are prescribed to counter the gritty discomfort of dry eyes. Tinted glasses or eye shields attached to spectacle frames reduce the excessive lacrimation triggered by the sun or wind. Infiltrative dermopathy or pretibial mix edema occurs in fewer than 5% of patients with Graves' disease. Treatment is rarely required, but in severe cases, topical glucocorticoids may be helpful.